Okay, let's jump right into it. I just finished the left wing and have it sitting in a rack now. I've got the right wing sitting on a table made out of a side of the crate that uh, the wings came in. I propped that up on a few sawhorses with some additional lumber supports, but uh, we don't need to go into detail. Just be creative, come up with a flat surface, uh, cover it with carpet so you don't scratch up your wing, and then we'll get started. The first thing you want to do is open the wing up. You do that by taking a number 40 bit and drilling out all the pop rivets that the factory installed to temporarily hold the wing skin in place. The bottom wing skin is the one you're going to open up on all the kits nowadays. They used to do with the top wing, so when you're looking at Eric Newton's manual, understand that you're looking from a different angle than your wing is going to be. You'll find that the trailing edge stiffener for the lower wing skin is hiding just in front of the rear spar in the lightning holes, and you'll have to slide that out the long way out the end of the wing. Now that we've drilled out all of the rivets, taken out all the extra parts, and cleaned it up a bit, we're going to need a way to hold the wing skin open so we can start working inside. Hammer a few brad nails into some 1x2s cut to about 24 inches, and four of them should be plenty. At this point you'll find that it might be worth vacuuming out all the rivets you've drilled out and the foam packing material that's left inside. It's a surprising amount of stuff you can clean up here. It's finally time to get some tools ready. We're going to be checking all the bolts and nuts and washers that have already been installed from the factory. The idea here is to make sure they're all torqued properly and uh, bolts of the appropriate length are used. You want to make sure you've got a few threads showing uh, past the end of the nut. And you'll find that quite often there are not. These are a couple of examples of bolts I found in the right wing that are obviously not going to be acceptable. So at this point I was finally able to do something a little bit more exciting and decided it was time to start installing the actuation mechanisms for the aileron and flaps. The aileron belt crank and push rod is what we're starting with, and you just pull those out of a cardboard box in your wing. Dig through the other part stash you've got and find the bearings that will fit into that belt crank. Alright, here we're going to be pressing this bearing into our pivot for the ailerons, belt crank. Don't try to do them both at the same time, just press one in, then the other, so they stay square. Otherwise, they will get wonky on you. Trust me. Okay, so we're going to take our AN4 dash 25, slide that up through our bell crank, slide the bell crank up into the assembly, add a washer, and a castle nut. And then of course later you'll cotter pin the castle nut. So there you have the long arm span wise, the short arm cord wise, looking down from the bottom of the wing, of course. For this next portion, we're going to install the push rod onto the bell crank. So you're going to need the push rod, a couple of rod end bearings with lock nuts on them, and an AN970-3, uh, regular washer, castle nut, and an AN3-14 is what I've And that is going to go right on the bell crank through this hole here, which I've already reamed out to get rid of the extra paint so the bolt will actually fit with the 3 16 reamer, of course. So we're going to install these like that. 
at both ends of the push rod. Aren't you glad you get to watch me thread things together? I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and show you how this all moves once you've got it connected. Obviously where the bungee is connected, that's going to be the aileron cable.